Now that we have the data in with the employees, the payroll item rates, and the time cards, let's look at the results. So first I'm going to run this estimate versus actual report, which we've already run in the previous video, but we want to take a look at it again. Okay, so estimate versus actual summary. Notice that nothing's changed, right? Estimated costs are in there. No actual costs are in here. Estimated revenues are in here. No actual revenues. Okay, now we're focused on the cost on this video, so we're not going to see the revenues, but no actuals in here yet. And then when I go in and run my profit and loss by job, nada, right? Because we haven't posted anything yet. Okay, so now let's get to the exciting report. So this is a uh, committed cost by job report. Under the jobs time and mileage, we had the committed cost by job. This is this report is available in enterprise only, which is why I'm showing enterprise, okay? The report is summary only, not detailed. They don't have a committed cost by job detail report. It's summary only. So we have here, the way we read this, we have all our jobs down the side. Then we have our estimated costs in total. Okay, We have our actual costs, which is blank, right? because we have no actual costs yet. We haven't posted any transactions. What would show up here is if you have any cost transactions, so bills, checks, credit card, transactions, credit card entries that are associated with the job, that would show up as actual costs because those are posted transactions. Then we have our committed costs here, which would be any costs that are on a PO that are tied to a job. So on the PO, if you have a line, like on the line, it's associated with a customer job, it would show up here under the committed costs area. Okay. Finally, we have the exciting part, which is our unpaid wages. Okay. This is not a column we can drill down into, so you can see you know, in QuickBooks you have that little magnifying glass. You can double click to see the details. Unpaid wages, you cannot double click to see the details. Uh, this is not a column that we that is you know, an actual uh, cost yet. right? It's just giving us information. It's an information only column in QuickBooks. Okay? And what it does is it takes the hours and multiplies it times the stated rate set up at the employee level and then allocates that amount to the job. Okay, that's where those numbers are generated from. Um, and then of course we have the total costs and the remaining costs on the job for the estimate here. Now this, as, this report defaults to all time automatically. So you have to be aware of that. This is looking at all time for all jobs, etc. So what we want to do is we just want to move it to June for now because we're just going to be importing the costs for June. All right, so it changes, right? Now the unpaid wages is a little bit less here. Now I'm going to export this to Excel so I can grab those costs by job. So we're gonna go up to here, click on Excel and create a new Excel worksheet, okay? And of course, I always check those advanced tabs to see, make take out the space between columns because I don't need that and we don't need the QuickBooks export, export guide. So I uncheck those and then go in and export. Now we have this open up in Excel here, okay? So I'm gonna to start to clean up this Excel file to get the information that we want only. So the first thing is I don't need this top column. I wanna get rid of that top column so we're just left with the information there. Then I wanna get rid of the rows that we do not need. So I don't need the estimated costs, actual committed. I do wanna leave the unpaid wages because that is what is you know, the data that I want to get in the file ultimately, right? What are these unpaid wages that I want to allocate to the appropriate job, All right? So I get rid of that. Okay, now I'm also going to go ahead and insert a column in here into kind of column A area. I don't need this total column here, um, so I'm going to get rid of that as well. So what I'm looking at, what I'm up against, right, so when I see this in Excel, I'm up against the fact that we have all the customers in one column and we have the job in a different column without the customer in the um, cell right before it, right? So I can't just concatenate or anything like that. Um, so I have to do some, a little bit in Excel um, in order to get these into a format that can 
we can paste it into QuickBooks. So in QuickBooks, of course, we should know when we're dealing with any kind of customer jobs, the way that QuickBooks does it is customer colon job. That tells QuickBooks that this is a job under that customer, right? Using that colon in there. So we need to get these because four lane has a job that we're importing cost to. We need to get that in the proper format. Okay, so I'm going to set here um, and write the formula that I want in this cell since it's really the office building one. That's the biggest deal. Now, obviously, I could, you know, the, there's only five in here. I could just put four lane colon office building and do it manually, but I want to give you guys the um, option for if you have thousands of jobs going on right now. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to say. Uh, and we're always, I always do an if then formula. It's always the easiest way. So I'm saying if this cell, right, if something in this cell, if there's something in this cell really, so if this equals blank, so if there's not something in this cell, then just return B2, right? Because what that's going to say is for this one as an example, if this is blank, just give me four lane, or if this is blank, just give me enterprise, right? If it's not blank though, we want to concatenate, right, which is a function in Excel that combines cells together. So we want to concatenate this, right, so the box to the top, and then comma, and we're going to put in open quotes, colon, close quotes, so it says take B4, stick in a colon, and then after B4, put in C5. All right, so again, let me read through this with you. I need two quotes, or close parentheses. So it's saying, if C5 is blank, then just return B5. Just give me B5. So if we're looking at it up here, it's saying, if C2 is blank, so it is, just return B2, which would be Austin Center. But if it is not blank, return four lane, put a colon in there, and then stick in the job, right? So four lane colon um, office. All right, so that worked. I have it in the format that QuickBooks wants it in, four lane colon office building. I'm going to copy this up. Make sure it worked for the ones that didn't have jobs. Yes, look, it just returned Austin Center and then copy it down as well so I get that Soccer City, okay? Again, this will be in the, um, in the uh, index that you have so you can go and use this formula on your own or you can copy it down here. All right, so now that I have the customer in the format that I need it in, I'm going to go ahead and copy and then do paste special and paste my values so that it removes the formula and just leaves, right? Four lane, office building, etc. Now that I have that, I can get rid of these two columns because I have my customers in there. Now I have my unpaid wages. Um, now that I want to also copy this because this actually holds formulas in it as well. So we're going to copy this and do paste special and paste the values as well. Okay. All right. So now the only thing that I have to pay attention to is that there's, there are some totals, right? There's total four lane in here. And so that's duplicating the data. So we don't want to import both of those together. So again, you would normally just sort these, all of the totals area, just delete all the ones that say total. So you get rid of them. And then also you can sort, right? Data A to Z sort, say it has headers and sort by wages. And then any blanks, right? So this one has no amount in it. So we don't really care about importing a $0 amount. So we can get rid of that as well. Now the total itself of all of these also, we want it to be an offset, right? So we want to post all of this to the job. And then we want to offset um, an amount that's not against the job, basically. So it's a complete wash on the P&L. So I'm going to make that amount negative down here. Okay, and now I have my Excel format in a, or Excel spreadsheet in a format that I can get data into QuickBooks. Now back in QuickBooks, let me go ahead and close out of some of these reports here. 
Okay. Uh, now I'm in the accountants edition, so I can go right up to my accountants area and batch enter transactions. Now, if you do not have the accountants edition of Enterprise because you're an Enterprise user, what you do have is a user called external accountant. So you can't do this as the admin, which is odd, I know, but you can't. Um, so what you do is you go in and set yourself up in the company, right? Set up your user and role, assign your user the role that's called external accountant, and then you'll have access to some of these tools, okay? So batch enter transactions is where I'm gonna go first. Now it always says, hey, you need to, uh, to in order to write a check, you need to have a bank account. We're not writing checks, but I'm just going to create a bank account for now because it's asking me to. Then it gets me into the batch enter transactions area. Now we're not actually going to batch enter checks and the reason why you don't batch enter checks is because we have positive amounts, right? So uh, really credits um, that we're entering, but we have positive amounts and negative amounts in the same transaction, right? We're going to be putting in all of these uh, transactions to post the cost to the job, right, which would be a debit against the job and then a credit against whatever offset we have up top here. Um, and you can't post in a negative check, right, because we want to put in all the, the debits against the job and then we want to credit an offset against the same account on the P&L but just not against a job. So because I have that credit in there, I don't want to use checks because you can't post negative checks. So what I do want to use is I want to use credit card charges and credits. Now I could also use bills, but the issue with using bills is that you have to have a vendor on the bill and you have to at some point go in and pay the bill, right? Um, when I do it to credit card charges, the only thing that maybe would be beneficial to do occasionally is reconcile that account down to zero, but otherwise there's no additional steps and on a credit card charge, a payee is not required. Okay, so I'm going to enter credit card charges. It says I don't have one. Let me create one now. So I'm going to call it the job cost charge charges. Okay, and save and close. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize my columns. So I'm going to use this customized columns to bring in the columns where that we want. So I want date. I don't need payee. Okay, I do want to bring in the item. I want to bring in the customer. Okay, and I'm going to move them up next to date. So there's the item and there's the customer. Now, oops, move down. Now you can use the account as opposed to using the item if you want to. I just like using items. It's, I just, if, if I can use an item anywhere in QuickBooks, you're gonna see me use an item because I can just report better at the item level. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up, up the memo as well so that we can enter a memo, although that's not required. And then say okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put in the date as 6.30, because remember I am entering in the costs for June. And then I'm gonna go back to my Excel spreadsheet and I'm just gonna copy the entire thing here. Control C, I come back in here, I'm going to uh, paste in, oops, the memo's out of order. Hold on, let me put it in order. So um, the amount needs to be next to customer job, right? Then I'm gonna come in here uh, choose labor, right, as my item, and then I'm going to paste in, so it pastes in my customer job information. Notice that it copies the date down. I'm going to take the labor item and right click on that cell and say copy down. Okay, uh, why didn't it paste in my job? Where did it go? Here we go. Paste in my job again because it I don't know why I took that out. And then in the memo section here, I'm going to put in June job costs. And then I can also right click and copy that down. Okay. Now down below, you can see the total charges are 31,800. The total credits are 31,800. So it's going to net out to zero, right? And it's going to go against the labor item. Now this is a transaction type of credit card charge, right? So it's a purchase transaction type. So it's going to be hitting the, um, the account that we chose on the item setup, right, over here on the purchase transaction. So it's going to be hitting direct labor, but it should be a wash in direct labor, and it should be a wash in the credit card register, 
So I'm going to go ahead and save transactions. Okay, All of the transactions have been saved and I can go ahead and close out of here. And now all of those costs have been entered against the job. So in our next video we'll go through and look at the results.